Belfoy, your cheerleader of dreams. Hey, if you've never subscribed to this podcast, just push the little red button right there to get consistent teaching tools and tips to help you live your dreams. Today, I want to talk to you about life begins at the end of your comfort zone. You know, anytime you're getting ready to go to a new level, the next level of your life, it's going to demand leaving a place of comfort. And that's not fun. You know, I've discovered that God never allows us to get too comfortable for too long. He's constantly stretching us to do new things, to launch out, to dream bigger. We can't stay in the safe zone all of our lives and expect to live our dreams. In fact, God said to Joshua, you have not passed this way before. Well, God is saying that to you today, that new things are on the horizon for you, but you have to step out in faith. You know, just when we think, I've got a system in place. I can rest here. It's like God says, it's time for something new, something big, expensive, costly, uncomfortable, and sometimes downright scary. (laughs) In fact, somebody once said, comfort and convenience run the lives of unsuccessful people. Now, I promise this is a motivational podcast, but you know, I've discovered in my own life, I remember years ago when I first graduated from college, I went to work for my dad, who's a minister, and my first job was to transcribe little tapes, like listen to cassette tapes word for word and write them down, just type them up. Well, then that led to my dad saying, I want you to turn those transcripts into books, like become a ghostwriter. Well, that stretched me out of my comfort zone. I was so scared that I was going to delete content that he wanted. Well, I ended up writing more than 25 books for him, and I got comfortable. I wasn't stretching anymore. In fact, this is one of the books I wrote in two and a half weeks. In other words, I got comfortable. Well, then I remember when they asked me to supervise the whole media department. That pushed me out of my comfort zone. That meant overseeing, you know, the success of our website, magazine, resources, books, CDs, TV show. Well, again, I had to step out of my comfort zone. But then, little by little, I began to learn what I could. I was able to talk about branding with confidence, talk about target audiences, demographics, ROIs, things like that. I met with the best producers and media marketing specialists, and we ended up producing a successful TV show but I got comfortable. Then I remember when they wanted me to be on the TV show with my dad, and I thought, what? With this voice? (laughs) I don't want to be in front of people. I love being behind the scenes. Well, you talk about stepping out of my comfort zone. In fact, you know, I remember the first time I started doing television, I was sitting in the parking lot in my car on the phone with my best friend crying, going, I don't want to do this. I'm scared. Well, As a result, I began doing the openings and the closes with my dad. Then it led to co-hosting the TV show, which I did for 10 years. And we saw our response go up and we saw good results. I wasn't crying in the parking lot anymore and I loved it. In other words, I started to get comfortable. Same thing when I became the CEO of my dad's organization. That meant overseeing the finances, the personnel, the media department, everything, and seven offices around the world. Well, Talk about stepping out of my comfort zone. I remember the first time I went to a CEO workshop and and when I was checking in, the lady looked at me like, the Mary Kay conference is around the corner. (laughs) I was like, no, I'm a CEO. Well, I met with the best CEOs. I began to learn and educate myself. And I did that for 11 years and saw great success, you know, with our impact around the world. But then I got comfortable behind my beautiful black desk. And then again, it's like it never ends because it doesn't ever end. In fact, I remember when the Lord put it on my heart that it was time to resign as CEO, move to Rockwall, Texas, open up offices from scratch. I mean, we needed everything, computers, desk, chairs. We needed paper. We needed everything. I was like, I don't want to. I'm comfortable leading now. I was very comfortable and safe there. Well, my dad had already built everything for me. I'd been working with him for 22 years. We had an entire customer service department, accounting, shipping, TV studios, a team of people working with me. I had a comfortable salary, insurance, retirement. Nope, the Lord said it's time to start from scratch. Give it all up, all this comfort and security, and go. Well, we launched out September 2014, and by December of that year, our ministry had doubled. So my point is, every time I've just sucked it up, made myself launch out of my comfort zone, it's far exceeded my expectations. In other words, you will never regret obeying God. 
Everything you've ever wanted is one step outside your comfort zone. You know, Brian Tracy said, move out of your comfort zone. He said, you can only grow if you're willing to feel awkward and uncomfortable when you try something new. Well, it's scary though. In fact, the Lord said to me one time, Terry, you're so afraid of missing it, but that works both ways. You could miss it if you do nothing. In fact, I remember in 2009, I just got away with the Lord, grabbed a journal and a pen, and I just imagined my life in the future if I don't step out of my comfort zone. I mean, I don't have any distractions. I just sat there and pretended nothing changes in my life from what I'm doing today, and it's 10 years from now. Am I happy? Um, so I literally, I wrote it out. I wrote out my life in the year 2019, added up my age, my daughter's age, how long I would have been serving as CEO, what my daily routine is like. And by the end of this picture that I painted on paper, I was utterly miserable. And it wasn't that my life or my job were bad. They were amazing. But it was because deep down inside, I knew God had more for my life. And I believe you do too. In fact, I remember saying, I'm comfortable financially. Rodney and I go on amazing vacations, but how many scrapbooks can you make of Rodney and Terry on the beach? I wrote, I was created to do so much more with my life. Well, that exercise fired me up to not come to the end of my life with nothing but regret and some Hawaiian scrapbooks. Well, if you're in that stage that I was in where you know God has more, but you're hesitant to leave that place of comfort, I'm believing this podcast is a divine appointment to stir you up to step out. In fact, I heard T.D. Jake share a message years ago about a nest, and basically he was saying, don't die in your nest. Well, oh Lord, did it wake me up. <laughs> of course, he was shouting in my ear and sweating and stuff, but it was the most powerful message for me during that transition. And he began to explain what is a nest. Of course, this is a really cute, fancy one. But a nest is a safe place, a comfortable place, a secure place. In other words, it's a comfort zone. Now, keep in mind, the nest that initially is a blessing, it becomes a curse if you stay in it too long. Well, God said, I will lead you as the eagle stirs her nest. Now, keep in mind, stirring the nest, that only happens when the eagles have grown too big to live in something so small. So are you too big to be living in something so small? Is it tight in your nest? But you, maybe you stay there because it's familiar, it's comfortable, it doesn't demand too much of you. Well, T.D. Jakes explained, he said, the same mother who made it cushy and comfortable and nice and relaxing, comes along with the same beak and starts stirring the nest so that the protrusions that were once on the outside now are pointing on the inside, making it uncomfortable for you to stay in your nest. In other words, what nourished you at one stage in your life? Well, it's too small for what God wants to do in your life now. Think about it. If an eaglet on its own would just fly out of the nest, then the mom wouldn't have to stir the nest. In fact, Job said, I thought I would die in my nest. Well, have you ever been in a situation that you thought wouldn't change and then God comes along, starts stirring things up and you think, what is going on in my life? Like what happened? Well, it's just God saying, I'm stirring the nest. It's time to go to the next level. In other words, you can't rest in your nest anymore. Suddenly you'll start seeing things differently. You start saying, I never realized how small this is, how limited this is. In other words, I've got to get out. I've got to go to the next level. See, you're not supposed to stay there. You were supposed to start there. You were never meant to be housed in something so small. Suddenly, you're going to realize the world out there is bigger than the world in here. And the Bible says we will soar up with wings as eagles, right? Well, as long as you stay in the nest, you can't spread your wings and you can forget about soaring. So let me just say, you may be feeling like God is telling you to leave a place of comfort, a job, a career, start a new thing in your life, a new business, a ministry, an outreach, a career change, or just start pursuing that bigger dream that's in your heart. In fact, I remember texting my dad and I was crying saying, Dad, I didn't know it was going to be this hard like to leave his ministry. And my dad texted me back a powerful statement that I want you to hold on to. He said, Terry... Transition is God's way of promotion. Transition is God's way of promotion. Well, I don't know what God may be speaking to your spirit, but I know we must never get too comfortable. As long as you're comfortable, you're not growing. So transition is necessary in order for you to pursue the next assignment that God has for your life. Well, I wanna just take a moment 
to recognize our subscriber of the week, and this is Ruth Jr. Ruth Jr. says, God bless you, Terry, for your good work. She said, you have inspired me and motivated me all these years. I appreciate that, and it's an honor to do this. She said, through your inspirations, I was able to discover my calling, and I'm now living my dreams. She said, I'm looking forward to host a big conference with you one day very soon. God richly bless you. Well, Ruth Jr., I'm cheering you on, and I'm so proud of you to hear that you're living your dreams. And just remember, those of you watching, anytime you're getting ready to go to a new level, the next level of your life, it will demand leaving a place of comfort. I have a feeling Ruth has left that comfort zone. So I want to help you step out of your comfort zone so you can go after all that God has for you. I've developed simple yet effective exercises to help you do that. Now this is going to help challenge you in the best way possible. And all you have to do is click the link in the description for my comfort zone download that you can refer to each day. I think you're going to have fun with this. And I truly believe this message can take you from where you are to where you want to be. Now, for more consistent motivation, be sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. You can find my handles below or click that little red subscribe button for weekly videos to make this your best year yet. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.